Alrighty kids, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Matt. This was the cheapest brush cutter I could pick up at the Ritchie Brothers auction. And if you haven't seen the video uh, when I bought this thing, go ahead and click up here. It's over here. See it? And if you don't see it, it's probably down below in the doodly doo. So anyway, long story short, I picked this up at the auction, brought it home, used it for maybe five minutes, and uh, <laughs> both of the blades went flying off of there. Uh, so I have got a job to do with this thing today and I got to cobble the blades back onto it with the parts I got I'm waiting on better upgraded uh, quality replacement parts, but in the meantime, I want to be able to use the thing So I'm gonna try and get the original blades back on it today And I also want to pull this cover off and inspect the gearbox and the pump that's on here Just to see what kind of build quality they are and see if the gearbox needs any fluid Got your good quality self tappers installed here. And the bad news continues with this brush cutter. While it's still not a big deal, it is just one of those things that's irritating because you just spent money this thing's brand new it literally has five minutes of runtime on it and here we are the uh, lovejoy style coupler we got going on here should have a rubber bushing here and you can see half of them are already gone there's one missing there one missing there Let's see if we can turn this thing over all the way i can't do it i'm sure the third one's missing down below I'm sure there should be i guess i can't tell I'd have to count them better. Should be, should be four, or should be six, I'd imagine. So all you gotta do to replace that uh, is unbolt this. Should slide back enough to take the old rubber isolator out of there and put a new one on. Uh, but you shouldn't have to do that after you've run this thing for five minutes. So kind of irritated about that. I mean, this thing is literally cut for maybe five minutes. So if you didn't watch the first video, I picked this thing up for like $1,900 plus I had a six hour round trip, almost well, seven hour round trip drive to the auction site to pick it up. So I got, let's just say a little over two grand in it by the time you add in fuel and that's not really accounting for my time either. So to buy a good quality one of these, you're looking at easily four to five grand. And so far I've got blades that threw themselves off in the first five minutes and a lovejoy coupler here that's missing half of the rubber isolators on it already so that's going to fail in the next five minutes or less I'll, I'll pretty much guarantee that the only saving grace on this is that it's still runnable without the isolator it's just gonna clang and bang a little bit more and it's a little bit tougher on everything so uh, I'm not real keen on running it without that but i should be able to pick that up at the supply store up the street and it should only be a couple dollar part I did my research before I bought these things and everybody told me the blades were bad and that the they would need replaced. But what I do not remember seeing anybody mention was that the step bolts or shoulder bolts or whatever you want to call these things that hold the blades on to the stump jumper in the middle of the cutter, uh, nobody said that they would just strip right out like that. You guys see how mangled the threads are on this thing? I mean, just utterly destroyed. So I went to Rural King and I went to Tractor Supply and nobody has this exact size uh, step bolt for brush hogs. And I, like I said, I want to use this thing. So these are, I've got a sneaking suspicion that these things are not as hard as a grade 8 bolt. So I got grade 8 18 threads per inch nuts here, which matches the threads that were on there. And I'm going to run these down because I don't have the correct die for that. I've only got... Uh, 5 8 10 I think that's what it is the standard coarse thread so this thing threads on there some but the threads down here are pretty boogered so I'm gonna oil that up and uh, crank it down on there and that should chase the threads up enough just to get it on the cutter and snugged up and then once I have them as tight as they should be you know before you had a, a cotter pin there that went through and was supposed to hold the nut down here but obviously that didn't work so I'm gonna run these things down snug up the blades 
and then uh, rev up the old blue hot glue gun here and melt them on there. Yeah, I mean, I'm irritated about this stuff because I shouldn't have to do it. It's brand new. I mean, I know it's a cheapo, but I mean, five minutes? Come on. But on the other hand, they are cheap fixes, and overall the construction seems pretty decent. So if this is all we have to fix on, a couple bolts for the blades and a rag joint coupler, then I won't cry the blues too bad because well worth the investment. As I said, a comparable quality unit, you're probably looking at four or five grand. And even the... the, the this application, I mean, they just abuse themselves. They're, they're, it's a very abusive application. Tough on everything from the machine to the cutter itself. It's, it's just a violent operation. So even the good ones fail. I mean, I see a lot of, a lot of used ones online for sale. Uh, the name brand ones that are pretty well tore up. And even used, they want more than I spent for this guy. So, uh, you know... I think I'm alright. So that worked out pretty good there on the first one. We'll see how it works out on the second one. And like I said, I'm not too concerned with them actually uh, holding because they're too damaged to really hold a lot of pressure, but I'll weld them. The heck with it. Alright, this should work. Okay, before I go uh, lifting the brush hog up and getting it all topsy-turvy to put the blades back on, uh, I'm going to check the lubricant and the gearbox on there. And I found this nice old bottle of Pennzoil kicking around in the garage. So we're going to go ahead and pull the fill lug and plugs out of that thing and uh, see how low it is on fluid. Because uh, the way the quality of everything else is looking, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there's none in it. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. The... Uh sun it's real bright out here it makes it hard to tell on screen if you guys are focused or not oh there we go the, the top plugs loose <laughs> great sign you don't need to tighten the fill plug it's just an extreme duty brush cutter there's one out oh and the the, the level plugs a different size unreal I'm getting frustrated here. Well, there's nothing coming out. We'll start adding it, see how much it takes. Oh, you dirty. Dirty, dirty people. I put in a good bit so far, most of the bottle. Still nothing coming out. I bet you this gearbox was slap empty. I'm, I'm glad it did lose the blades because I'd have played around out there and run it without oil in the gearbox. There we go. So it took, this bottle is probably full up to here and it took all that to start coming out the level plug there. I'm I'm not particularly impressed. For the life of me, I can't understand why the two plugs are different sizes as well. That's more than irritating. Okay, didn't bother to record it because I figured sure nearly nothing's gonna happen putting the stinking cover back on the gearboxes. No no, the cheap little 16th inch freaking self tapper screws they used to put this cover on a heavy duty brush guard uh, I snapped one off on this side and two off on this side and I'm not talking about running them down and brrr, hitting them hard I mean they didn't even shoulder up yet and they snapped off going back into the same holes they came out of I I, I don't even have words for that I mean at least you could have used a heavier self tapper what the heck
All right, well, since they already went in there with the zip screws, I just did the same. I put a little bit heavier ones in it, though, not those little toothpicks that they had holding it. Uh, so, yeah, let's get underneath here and see what we're looking at now. Real quick, I want to mention, too, this is a JCT brand brush cutter, too. So here we are on the back side of the underside of the brush cutter here. This is the plate that our blades bolt to. You can see there's a hole right here and one 180 from it. Uh, a lot of the better brand brush cutters will have three. So they'll have one, two, three, you know, around there. So you get more inertia, more blades cutting, more power. Uh, which I guess you could very easily take this disc off and drill it out uh, for three blades. Anywho... Uh, I can go ahead and throw the blades back on here now that I've chased those threads on the bolts. But see, I got this little bit of deflection in this thing. Can you guys see that? So, also I noticed in the nut holding it on here, we have the exact same setup that we had with the blades. We have a castle nut with a cotter pin, but the cotter pin is not down through one of the slots. So the nut can actually back off of there a little bit and run up into this cotter pin before it gets tight. So... I'm going to take this out of there and take the whole unit off and see what we're looking at. Uh, so before any further damage happens, maybe I can do something to prevent it. Aha. Yep, see that nut was loose. The only thing holding that nut on there was that cotter pin. That's why it was a little difficult to get out. I'm really glad that we checked this. So the same thing that happened to the blades would have happened to this disc had I left that go unchecked. Unbelievable. The threads still look all right. Thin piece of crap washer. Our splines look all right, although they're not a very beefy spline. I'll have you guys take a close-up at that. Uh, the light's playing havoc on you right now. See that? It's a tapered spline. It's like maybe maybe an eighth inch down here at the bottom. It tapers up to nothing over the course of maybe two inches. Not a very aggressive spline. That's going to strip out in time. I'll almost guarantee it. I have a better gearbox off of an old school tractor brush hog. So if this strips out in time, what I'd probably end up doing is just putting it on there and welding it solid. And then, you know, if the gearbox fails after that, so be it. I'll cut it off of there. This is just a coupler on the disc here. I'd take the coupler off with it and uh, switch out the gearboxes for a better one and put the coupler that would go on that old gearbox on there. I guess we should, yeah, look at that. I was just going to say, I guess we should check these nuts, too, while we're in here. Make sure everything's tight. That guy's nice and tight, huh? Unbelievable. Quality workmanship here, boys. Shouldn't have to do this. Okay, well I tightened all eight of these bolts, mounting these uh, things on here. I'm gonna check these gearbox bolts while I have it up here because I'm sure they're probably loose too. Uh, then we can throw our disc back on or our blades back on and our cover back on over the engine again because I had to take that off, or over the motor rather. I'd take that back off to snug these bolts up. Uh, and then maybe we can go mow. Probably for about 10 minutes and she'll break. But we're gonna give her hell.
Those ones seem pretty snug. You know, I don't want to go cranking on these guys because you'll probably break these or pull the threads out of the casting. Oh, I am sweating. Sweating bullets out here today. We'll go ahead and hit all these bolts on this, uh, this piece right here too because, you know, everything else loose. We'll check them too. Got a little bit of turn out of a couple of them, but most of them are pretty tight. I won't complain about that piece. Oh, this guy's heavy. Come on, line up. All right. So one thing about that taper spline that I do like is that you run the nut down there and it jams it up in there and it makes it a taper lock. So actually that should be a pretty good fit. Now all they have holding this nut on here, first of all, it wasn't tight. I was, I took it off with my fingers. Second of all, uh, I'm gonna put some good red Loctite on there, the kind that you put on when you don't ever want it to come off. I'm gonna put some good red Loctite on there and we're gonna run this baby down good with the impact. Not going to be shy with the Loctite in this application. Put her on there like we don't ever want to take that thing off. Because I sure don't want it coming loose. Heck, we're going to put it in the nut too. Oh, almost forgot my washer. I'm screwing up. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. She is locked down now. Now, as I talked about before, when I put the bolts back through here for the blades, I'm gonna snug the nuts up, and instead of putting this cotter pin back through, we're just gonna tack the nuts on there. Actually, for these guys, I'm gonna do more than tack them. But this guy, I don't wanna ruin that shaft, so we are just gonna put a little tack in two or three places around that nut and make sure it doesn't come back off on us. I am not messing around here. Now, that's the red locker. So I got the blades gathered up here, getting ready to put them back on, and uh, I don't think I did it because the paint's not off there. I think that was, these gouges are from, uh, they were already like that when I bought the thing, brand new. They're on the other side too, so yeah, it makes me think that something probably caught them. I don't know when or how, but I don't, I don't believe I did that. Anywho, I don't know if you can tell, this blade here, pretty straight across here, this blade here has a gap under here, so the whole blade is kind of bent like that. And that was like that. I noticed that before I even ran this thing. Uh, but like I said, the research I did indicated to me that I'd be buying blades for it anyway. So I said, yeah, we'll let it go. Stupid. So I'm going to throw this thing in the press real quick and see if we can at least take that bend out of it. And then I'll hit them up with the grinder real quick and sharpen them up. Got a pretty negative bend in it now. We'll uh, see if that, that does. Doesn't look like I changed it at all. I'm gonna go pretty far this time. like we might have got it sitting back here on the trailer deck we can tell that we did in fact get it uh, pretty good it's still 
I guess it's low in the middle now, a little bit and high out here, but plenty good enough for what we're doing. These are just temporary anyway. Well, I'd probably run them until they break at least. You know, you might as well get your uh, get your money's worth out of them. Well, it probably doesn't matter for brush hog blades, and I probably just wasted my time doing it, but I just took the grinder real quick and cleaned the edges up a little bit, got rid of these high spots where the nicks were, and then like on the back sides here, these points were like kind of rounded over. I don't know if that's from when they sheared them off in the manufacturing process or what, but I got rid of all the high spots and low spots. Kind of just cleaned up the edges a little bit, and let's throw these babies on. So after going through everything and looking back at it, if I would have probably just inspected this thing better before I even fired it up and tightened everything and uh, all that jazz, this thing probably would have held together just fine. But uh, it is what it is. I kind of, you know, you get excited to get a new toy. You sure want to play with it. <sighs> I'm afraid to put much more pressure on these nuts because they are so stripped out. But that's uh, it's looking pretty good there. <clears throat> All right, pretty happy with that. Get the old uh, true blue hot glue gun out, buzz these babies on. So we'll go ahead and tack this thing, this big castle nut, in two places. I'll get it right here where the pinhole is to one of the turrets and then 180 on the other side in the same spot. I'm sure some of you are scratching your heads of why I'm doing this, but it's really not hard to just take a grinder and nip that tack out of there and uh, be able to get the nut back off do this a lot in the mining industry and steel mill equipment all kind of heavy industry stuff you just tack nuts not that big a deal all right so there's one tack right there the other tack underneath up here on this bolt pretty much got at least halfway around them uh, if not more kind of hard to get in there especially because I'm at the extent of my reach with the welder that's as long as a cord as I got it gets me out the door and the ground just reaches up here so it all worked out though and uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with that actually I don't think we're gonna have any trouble now and I sure hope I didn't just jinx myself with that one never ever say that Ugh. Well, I figure since we fixed it, we better uh, apply the proper warning labels now so people know. <sighs> I think that took me about two and a half, three hours to get all this done. Working kind of slow because it's so hot and by myself, you know, hard to hold a wrench on the back side and run around and tighten them on the other side. So it took a little bit of extra time, but uh, yo, now, now we're ready to go to work. Well, I know, I know, you get what you pay for. This video is not actually intended to be its own standalone video. This was actually just supposed to be me doing minor fixes and putting the blades on before I went and did a job, but there was so much crap ended up being wrong with this uh, Chinesium brush cutter that I ended up having to make a whole video out of it. And uh, you want to talk about hot. I was hot in more than one way the day I was working on this thing. Uh, very disappointed in the lack of attention and assembly of this unit. I, I really don't think that the components are all that bad after using it for a while and working out some of the kinks. 
uh, the Lovejoy style coupler on there, spider coupler, whatever you want to call that. It's it's cheap junk and it's about ready to fail on me probably after about 10-15 hours of use now. So I'm sourcing another one of those, a name brand one. Um, and the blades themselves, they're not the best, but they're they're holding up okay. And uh, you'll see in the next video what I had to do to keep it running. But anyway, if you like the video guys, if you would, hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps the channel out. And if you want to see this brush cutter in action, you're going to have to hit that subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I post new videos of this brush cutter, which is coming up real soon. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you on that next video. Later.